morning. Are you the first one I see every morning? <laughs> morning, Steve. Ready for the day? Not too shabby of a day so far. What's up, Caddy Wampus crew? Welcome back to Caddy Wampus Acres. It's Jason. We got to get our chores in and get ready for this day. We got a farmer's market today. Ladies, you ready for, to be milked? Ruka's always ready. <coughs> Luna Francine, you sweet, sweet girl. Look at her. <coughs> yes, she is. Hey, Hulk. Hulk's always just a little bit shy. So check out what we picked up for the goats. Jolene has been all up on this. She scratches her head on the middle of it, and then oh. <laughs> so our buddy TJ got us a uh, hookup on a used street sweeper brush so the goats are loving it. Good morning y'all. morning. They do share pretty well. Ollie does okay. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna pour it on your head. Yeah, they do share fairly well, so. So the plan was with these two is that we were going to castrate or band a quag here, but then, and we were gonna keep Willie, but we ended up castrating Willie and banding him because um, I think so we made a last minute decision. I don't think Quag's uh, stuff was quite ready for to be banded yet, and Willie looked like he was ready, so um, we're gonna be selling Willie instead of Quag. So we have our farmer's market today. I gotta get ready for that. Lauren is out for an hour or so, and uh, yeah, so I gotta get our soaps ready and our beard oil ready. If you haven't tried our soaps or beard oils, you definitely gotta try them. I don't have a beard and I've been using the beard oil sometimes to shave and sometimes after I shave and it's awesome. Morning there, loudmouth. Yes, I heard you. I hear you all the time. Whoop. Good morning. Mr. Bojangles, how are you, sir? Buford. Buford. Good morning, buddy. Miyagi. Always looking fantastic. Fiona, good morning to you, ma'am. How are you? So what's it like in your area of the country or world right now? Uh, right now we're getting sort of into our warmer temperatures, but it has been overcast. It's doing that thing where it wants to rain or looks like it's gonna rain, but it's not. So we're having to make sure we water our garden plenty so we don't uh, make us too thirsty. We gotta feed Noel, and I gotta give these girls a new bale. There you go. Get this out of there. Morning, little girl. Morning, little girl. Are you having a good morning? It's all gone. It's all gone. <laughs> She'd drink for 20 days if she could, right? Huh? You could drink, you'd drink forever if you could. So we don't actually keep Noelle in that part of the barn all the time. We let her out to play quite a bit. It's just, she likes to drink off of Jolene who is not her relative at all, and that's cheating. We have tried milk sharing before, 
Um, I know people are probably like, that's so mean that you don't let her just drink naturally. But to be honest with you, with a goat dairy, it's not going to work. What would actually happen is if we just let her drink whenever she wants off of whoever she wants, she'll end up drying these girls up a lot faster and then we'll have to put them back into the cycle of breeding again and stuff like that and it doesn't doesn't work well so we still give her goat's milk everything like that's normal but um and it's still nice and warm and still and she loves it and to be honest with you her mom is over there uh peyton's her mom does not care in the slightest bit so that is what it is Okay, if you've been watching our Instagram stories, Lauren's been upset about a rat that's apparently been in the milk barn. I have not seen it yet. She apparently has seen it in full action. So let me show you what we're dealing with. Trap, trap, trap. So as you can see, Lauren uh, really wants to catch this rat. So hopefully, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll see it. Maybe I'll just grab it with my bare hands. Okay, okay, all right. Jeez Louise, all right. Come on in. You may never said before, but the feed we use that we've really been loving for the goats in that are in milk is called Godfrey's feed. It's um it's actually called Milk Maker, and so the ingredients in it are really good and they really up their protein and fats and stuff like that so they get plenty of stuff to produce milk and uh, stay nice and healthy. Isn't that right? And the hay we've been giving them is rye hay. And they like that. High sugar. Uh, I think it's got higher fat, but it's got higher sugar content, which definitely keeps them content for longer. Good roughage. Love it. Let me show you what these crazies are doing to my barn to try and get in here to get milk. Look at that. Look at that. That is from them banging up against the wall. They're maniacs. You hear them? to use iodine solely but uh, we have been using this fight bag stuff lately and it's been working really good I think it's about ugh, this big old bottle is probably about 17 18 bucks one of the many reasons we love our milking system gets all that dirt and hair it's not a ton but stops that from getting into our milk ever we absolutely love the fact that we know where our milk comes from and we have a hand in the process not only is it rewarding because it definitely is knowing that all the milk and dairy in your fridge is coming from your animals your farm that you take care of but also it's healthy some of these some of these dairy farms um yeah i don't know there's just too many and it's too commercial and i don't it just sort of hmm, you don't know what's going on there okay we're back in our garden. We had a great day at the farmer's market. Um, that all went well, like normal. And so now we gotta do some garden catching up. Our cattywampus climb on our tomatoes is doing very well. We already are in for our fifth, fifth, that's right, five strings. And they're all, I was gonna do them about six inches apart, but we're graduating to about, I don't know, getting to about 12, 18 inches now. Um, getting plenty of ripe tomatoes those are looking good and we have some supplies so we can do our cucumber trellis so we got these we're gonna give these a few uh, these a try we got these uh, sturdy twists and these are really thin <laughs> did you see that Noel is jumping around like a maniac okay we got these sturdy twists and these are just little thin things they have a um, cutter on there on a wheel and we can just pull those out, cut them. And then this is some uh, Gardner's Blue Ribbon Soft Wire Ties. So we're gonna give these a try. These were like three bucks, these were like four bucks. Tractor supply. We'll see how they go. See Steven down there, creeping. We are getting some uh, leaf curl on some of these lower ones because they definitely not get enough water right now. I feel bad for them, but we're trying our best.
As you can see, we're getting a an abundance of tomatoes in here. This is all cherry tomatoes. Call us crazy, being that we really don't have like a outlet other than our bellies and a bunch of salads and friends and stuff. But um, we really enjoy cherry tomatoes here, and so we have a ton of them. We're picking them every day now. They look great. Uh, this cattywampus climb that we've been doing this year has been working awesome. Um, Lauren didn't like the little ties as much as these ones are pretty easy to use. I'll show you. You just pull out some in the middle. You put it through there. Push that down. And then they're like a bread tie. So these work pretty good. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get over to our cucumbers, which are, geez, they are already, what, about a foot? About a foot tall in a lot of them. So we need to get over here and get them trellised. We're here in with our cucumbers. These are pickling cucumbers. This is what I like to grow because I don't like cucumbers by themselves. I just like pickles. It is what it is. I'm a weirdo. Uh, we have these seven foot T posts. I pushed this in the ground a little bit already. We're going to drive these in one here in the middle, one on either end. And we have some field fencing we're going to use on top of these. I think it's six foot tall. That doesn't really matter. And we're going to let these trellis up on our fence. And the nice thing is these just drive right through our garden, garden fabric. All right, first thing we're gonna tie up our field fencing. I'd say we're going to tie it right around, maybe just below the tops of these plants. We don't want it on the ground, that's unnecessary. That's our trellising of our cucumbers. Uh, we're probably just gonna let the tendrils grab them and they're gonna start working their way up. They have about six, six and a half feet to work with. And so we'll see how they do. Hopefully we have a prolific harvest of cucumbers this year. Steven has come to say hi, as always. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining us today on another video. We hope that you can uh, take some tips back to your own garden and we encourage you as always to, you know, grow with whatever space you have and work with whatever space you have and you can grow your own food because we believe that when you homestead you're home fed but thank you for joining us please don't forget to subscribe and like and hit the bell notification and share this video with all your friends on all social media and stuff so they can get some tips on homesteading themselves but for now that's it all right all right we'll see you guys next time